Hi, guys. We're having a book club night, and I'm so excited. The author of Getting to the Root by Connecting to the Vine, Maureen Wild, is on here, and she is going to just tell us all about her books. I'm so excited. We um, I do a 10-day shred detox every month, and I always try to give those doing it something to read on and think about. And I've been using this book this last month, and I love it because... There's, you know, it's really Maureen's story, but also she's put her faith in it and given everyone an opportunity to really think about how this is speaking to them individually. And I love like um, in the chair, she's always got little things in the chair, you and Jesus sitting there talking. He's the master gardener. And I love yeah. that. But um, yeah, like on this it's in the lawn chair. Have you? How have you been compromising your own quality of life with the foods and beverages you consume? What encouragement and hope can you draw from my testimony to help you with your own journey? Ask the master gardener if your drink and food choices are bringing him glory. Is it something healthy for the temple of God who resides inside of you? Tell him your heart. What is the master gardener sharing with you about the weeds he wants to eradicate in your life? Write out a prayer of willing surrender to him. So that was so rich and deep. I just thought I would share one of them. But we have 10 days and every day I've been giving them just a, a, you know, a snippet of this and then asking them to journal because we know there's so much power in journaling. I don't know if y'all enjoy journaling, but most people who like to read end up journaling also and writing. But tonight, I just really wanted Maureen to share her heart. And for anybody else who's on here, if you have questions or just something on the book jumped out at you and you wanted to, you know, just talk about it, kind of get in it. <laughs> I to say, get in it, get in it. Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah. yeah. So Maureen, do you want to just kind of give us, I don't know, just your heart, just what what do you, did you love about doing this book? What did it like reveal to you and how did it speak to you as you were doing it, putting yeah. it together? Yeah. Um, well, first off, if you don't mind, I took it, we'll just kind of put some skid breaks on. I'd like to just kind of open in prayer. So um, just a short, quick prayer. Um Abba Father, I just thank you so much for this evening. I thank you that um, you have gathered um, us here together and um, as sisters in Christ who um, just want to hear from you. And I'm privileged and honored that um, my friends have been reaching out to look at um, what you have tasked me with in sending a message. Um, in my mess, um, you gave me a message. And so I thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. So, yeah, um, well, actually, interestingly, um, if I could just kind of, what was really important to me is the subtitle, not only the title, but the subtitle was really important to me of finding health, healing, and wholeness through God's voice. And that was, that was the whole um really aside from the healing um that god took me on with the journey it was the time of being able to just sit and be with him and listen to his voice um and so funny enough is that i actually didn't um come across this particular book until after my book was published but it's called whisper how to hear uh, the voice of God. And so if you have not heard about this author, Mark Batterson, um, or this book, I really would encourage you to do it. And um, there's a local, um, there's some women here locally that we get together, we do a book study, and they really wanted to do my book. And I had just learned about this Mark's book. And I said, you know what, before we go through my book, I really, God has really put it on my heart to go through Mark's book first so that we're really in tune to hearing God's voice and how does he speak to us? So it's, it's a very profound message that he shares in here, 
Um, and he talks about the different ways that we hear God's voice. Um, he, he, he describes them in each chapter, he describes them as a different love language. So um, those seven love, he, there's seven of them, they're um, scripture, desires, doors, dreams, people, promptings, and pain. And I'll tell you, it was so affirming for me in reading this book that it truly was a message that God gave me to write the book that he gave me to write because he confirmed all of it through each one of those different ways, those seven different love languages. And it was just, it was just so powerful and um, really even, you know, deepened my own relationship with, with um, the Lord through it because it affirmed. I mean, he was just affirming to me that it wasn't just words in my head. It wasn't just me speaking. It was him truly having a message for me to share that he wanted me to get published, to share with other people. And then how, and we're still on a journey now. I mean, it's been um, a couple months since the book has been um, published and I'm still just really trying to figure out, you know, by spending that time with him of how does he want to use this? Um, how does he want to use this book? And I've been, and I'm grateful, you know, for this type of a, a session. And then the other session that you had with me, um, Angel, about with the book, just the kind of the book launch, um, which was about a month ago. Um, it's that was just really affirming for me as well. Those different using people to help, you know, support um, me and the message and and what God wants for us. So um, when I um, let's see, what did, uh, I wrote down some other. Oh, and I and I'm glad you brought up the part about the in the lawn chair because those were really important aspects of the journey. You know, it was so much of hearing from him and the, and I would, I'm one of those people that write in the margins of books. I'm, you know, I'm underlining, I'm circling, I'm starring, I'm doing all kinds of different things that um, just to kind of help reemphasize for myself of going back and looking at, at a particular topic and how, God spoke to me through that. And by using those journaling section session, sections, you know, that's what I really wanted the, the reader to take a hold of, you know, to um, spend that time knowing that their health journey um, is, is just so important. Um, you know, we all know that probably the biggest or mo most amount of prayers that people ask for is regarding our health, you know, and if we don't know how he's truly speaking to us um, and what we need to do, we could go on all these different kinds of tangents of getting to a healing state or maybe just end up treating a whole bunch of symptoms um, and not really ever getting to that root cause. So um, that's, you know, that was really the whole, um, I don't know what the word is, just the whole premise of trying to get, um, get everything down, you know, in what the Lord was telling me so that it could be shared in a way of how he shared it with me that it could be replicated by people, by other people who would read about my story. So thank you. Oops. Thank you for sharing that. I see we have Jerry on. Is that your friend? That's my mom and dad. Hey, hi. Oh. <laughs> I met y'all for Wellness Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Good you, to see yeah, you. You made it. Well, we're late, but we got a new computer and trying to struggle through all this stuff. <laughs> no, that's okay, mom, dad. I thought you were going to try to go on your phone, but you conquered your new computer, huh? Yeah. Good. <laughs> That's excellent. I was in a little war with my computer earlier. I could not figure something out. And I was like, I miss the olden days. We didn't have to do that. And my husband yeah. was like, 
we got to do it. We don't have a choice anymore. So good for you guys keeping up with the times. Well, so what was important to me, and I don't know where, um, you know, everybody else is as far as either starting the book or if you've already read through the book or where you're at in, in the journey. But I really was curious to just get any kind of feedback, you know, things that you guys wanted to share um, with me. I, I had some specific questions if you want felt comfortable answering any of those, depending on where you are in reading. But um, was there anything that you specifically wanted to ask me? Okay. So as you've read about the weeds, is anybody, have you guys gotten past the initial chapter of reading about the weeds? Yeah. How did those, how did they represent um, or what type of weed images came to mind for you? I used the illustration of the dandelion. Was there anything that came to your own mind? Well, Maureen, we live in such a beautiful foresty area, but yeah. sometimes our weeds are thorny and prickly. <laughs> and you still have to touch them to yank them out for sure yeah we have huge big tumbleweeds that uh <laughs> roll into our life that um, can easily be very painful so that's great that's a good one because that certainly um is a representation of a weed that can be in our life it can be thorny it can be painful um and difficult to get rid of because of all of those thorns. <laughs> was there anything as a, as a part of your, um, your journey, whether it's, you know, physical or emotional or spiritual that that particular type of weed represented Stacy or. No, it just is how I envisioned it when I was reading that. Yeah. Okay. So how about when you talk, when you read through the part about the acrostic of wild, when it, the, the big one is certainly being able to surrender, willingly surrender. Is there anything in your life that you sense the Holy Spirit was speaking to you about needing to surrender? I'm always surrendering my grown up kiddos. <laughs> it's easy when your kids are at home, you've got control, but when you don't have control anymore, <laughs> You have to just surrender them. It's like giving up your children at church when they're little, you know, dedicating them to the Lord. It's like a daily thing. And really every area of my life, I, I tend to want to control and manipulate and, um, you know, my business. I have to lay that before the Lord. I have to lay my my team down that I work with and my marriage. I mean, it's a it's an ongoing thing, I think. Pulling the weeds and surrendering are kind of an everyday thing thing because right. if you don't they pile up and it gets For worse sure. <laughs> it's like you have the big garden right you do a little work every day it's manageable you let it go and you're in trouble <laughs> yep absolutely that's a perfect um analogy to go with yeah um yeah and i'm in that you know that spot too of like i shared just a little while ago is okay the book is published like what do i do now um, you know, and so much of me wants to control how, um, how this is going to go. What am I, who am I supposed to speak to? Who am I, what am I supposed to do next kind of a thing? And, um, I can always tell when I'm not doing, um, when I'm, when I'm trying to do it all in my own strength, um, instead of trusting the Lord to direct it, because, I, my, my mind gets all whacked out and, um, you know, things just don't really fall into place. Um, 
it creates just a lot of anxiety for me. Um, so it's a, it's just that constant, um, like you said, Angel, of, of just pulling and letting go and digging, digging mm -hmm. deeper. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, Maureen, I wanted to um, kind of add in a, an image, like when you asked the hey, question and just what has kind of just come up in my mind, um, kind of thinking of like a garden that's supposed to be just like, you know, really nice, but then there's these weeds that come up or you have your lawn that's supposed to be all beautiful, but then you got the crabgrass that comes up. So it's like, you, you know, you have this vision that you're trying to create that you, know, you think is going to be beautiful and you want it to be beautiful, but there's always just this weed. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting in the way of making things to be the way you want them to be. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. Yeah, um, not always um, allowing us to, um, and and yet we could at some point, if we are able to really shift our mindset to say that weed can actually be beautiful in the midst of this, you know, mm -hmm. but trying to get there past the annoyance. <laughs> Um, Do y'all remember Veggie Tales? Anybody remember Veggie Tales? There was a uh, an episode on the VHS that we had of called the Rumor Weed. Do you remember that the Rumor Weed? And it was how gossip and that can come over and take over like weeds, you know, and choke out the garden. But it's funny because Wade and I were on a hike not long ago, and there was just just beautiful gardens, and there was a weed you know and it stuck out and Wade said that reminds me of the rumor weed and I hadn't thought about it in so long like 20 years or so and I thought wow you know that taught us a lesson and while we were just talking I thought weeds teach us lessons yeah you know they're not for nothing they they come into our life and and you know when bad things happen God uses it for good and um, the weeds in our life, he he teaches us things and shows us things. And sometimes you won't remember the lessons without having to do the work to pull the weeds out. Right. You know, it's in that action. And like you went through everything with your health battle and now you're using it to help others. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just, the rumor weed just popped in my head. <laughs> we were talking about that. <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah, that's the perfect um uh another perfect example of that. That's great. And yet, um, you know, it was funny when I was talking with um, some friends about um, the weeds and, and that someone made the comment of, well, yeah, it's like thinking that dandelions are actually bad weeds. And at first it just kind of shook me because it was like, oh gosh, that's the weed I actually used as my you know, analogy in the book. But the point being is that those, like you just said, Angel, and what she was trying to make was the, that weed is actually good. And if you think about it, actually dandelions, dandelion greens are actually very healthy for us. So we're looking, we're looking, I was looking at that dandelion as being a bad thing. And in a way, you know, it needed to be, you know, it needed to be extracted, but it was a good thing because ultimately it does provide those greens of that dandelion do provide, you know, us health and nutrients and, you know, things that we, we do need to have, but, um, and ultimately um, was showing too, that it's just something, you know, good makes us more, more beautiful in the, in the midst of it. So, yeah, thank you for that. Has there been any um, vision or purpose that the Lord's given anybody as far as um, by looking, by reading through the book that um, like in that chapter um, on vision and purpose? Um, something that he's given you that you want to, um, you know, maybe use to serve him or serve other people. I 
And end of the part, dance with you, Jesus. Um, what are the desires he's placed within you? And for those that don't know, I'm, I'm a fitness instructor also. So I love teaching dance fitness and all that. So I love dancing. I, I just love everything about it. Um, yeah, I put to keep my faith first, no matter what I'm doing. You know, no matter what areas, my my workout classes, my, my team, my business, um, and to serve as he calls me. So, you know, sometimes when you're dancing, the person leading can change the steps all of a sudden, you know, but it, but it turns out so beautiful in the end. And the choreography was so much better than you would have thought if you'd have kept going the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. You got to add some pizzazz, you know, some twists, some turns. Um, so I was just thinking about that. Sometimes that happens in life with your, you know, with your marriage or with your kids or, or whatever you're going through, but God will use it and it'll be more beautiful than you could have ever imagined. Kind of like the weeds, you know, you, mm -hmm. everything is used for his glory. Um, so that's just a couple of things I wrote out under that. Good. That's great. Has anybody gotten to the chapter yet about um, holistic nutrition? So the last um, chapter. What page is that? Um, 93. I was just curious if anybody had had, you know, any kind of, you know, um, revelation for themselves if you had gotten to that part but it's a chapter for those that haven't gotten to that chapter it's a it's about um eating in a way that's setting ourselves apart so that we are kept sacred and and um keeping our bodies sacred um so for heat and eating um nourishing foods and then i go into a lot of scripture verses Verses about how God designed us um, to eat and the purpose of our eating and and all of that. And so um, sometimes when we have that, um, this was one of my light bulb moments um, in writing is, you know, having that greater purpose for why do I want to eat this way? And for me, um, it was that I just, I wanted to be taking care of the temple, the body that God had given me um, to the best of my, you know, ability in being able to be healthy enough to serve him and serve other people. And um, so much of our eating is just, you know, it's not for health, it's for pleasure, it's for you know, because something tastes good or um, it's a comfort food or whatever, but not taking it to that next level of um, is there a greater reason why I'm choosing to eat this way? So, I don't want to be the only one who talks, but, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, if you'd have asked me that question before 2009 or before 2012, I really wouldn't have gotten it. I mean, it would have been like, you eat because you're hungry, you know, <laughs> or you eat certain foods because you want to be skinny. You don't want to be fat, you know, <laughs> but then, um, sorry, my puppies, he's supposed to be taking a little nap right now, <laughs> but when I had, I had a brain tumor and surgery and had to go through a lot of rehab and then it came back and I had radiation. That's when I started my health journey. And that's kind of how Maureen and I got connected through our um, juice plus company. It's like juicing. It's kind of like a juicing thing, but yeah, I see food now totally different. I think of it as, is this going to help me or hurt me? And it's almost like being a steward. You know, this yeah. table, We're only given it a short period of time you know, maybe 120 years, right? <laughs> Hopefully 120 years. And you got to take care of it. And 
none of us are promised tomorrow. I mean, anything could happen, but it's almost like smoking. You know, I used to, you know, I think smoking is terrible. Why would anybody do it? But it really almost hurts me now to see somebody smoking because I think they're not, they don't love themselves, you know, because everybody knows smoking will give you lung cancer eventually. And when people are doing that to themselves, it's almost like a form of self-hate. If that makes sense. And I, and they probably, you know, everybody's not thinking that way, but that's the way I see it now because it's almost like binge eating or anorexia eating disorders. Also, I see it as they don't see their value and how much God loves them. And I know there's mental problems that, you know, they need help counseling and all that too. There's no judgment there. It just kind of, instead of seeing it as you know why are they doing that to themselves i see it as a it's a sadness like they don't know that they are fearfully wonderfully made and god loves them and they are the temple and and i really do see it like that now and i'm not perfect 100 100 percent of the time all the time um but i do think about it if i'm at a birthday party and i have a little piece of birthday cake i'm not feeling really guilty about it but i do think about it like well this is going to be good for me but we're celebrating going to be happy i'm going to eat a small piece um but i do love eating healthy food like it makes me excited and happy cuz i'm like this is going to like making the smoothie somebody else on here we were talking about making smoothies for breakfast stacy i think um I love making my smoothies. I'm putting my spinach in, you know, I'm putting my berries in and I'm thinking this is nourishing my body. This is being a good steward. I'm investing in my body because I want to invest in my health because I want to do what God's called me to do. You know, hopefully I'll be a grandma one day and I'll have grandbabies and I'll be running and playing, but that's kind of the way I see food now. But before really the brain tumor and everything, I didn't, I didn't think of it like that at all. So I don't know where y'all are on your health journey, but sometimes it takes, you know, hitting rock bottom before you finally look up um, and then have a, some kind of life crisis before you start really getting help. But I love that you wrote this so that maybe it'll get some people before they have a crisis. Yeah, well, I certainly hope so. I mean, I and I was the same way. And fortunately, as I even, you know, share in the book, I didn't have a major health crisis. I just had all of those day-to-day -day aches and pains that I was tired of. Why is my body always hurting and I don't feel well? Um, and I was only in my 30s. And it's like, I can't live the rest of my life this way. Something has to be different. And so, um, and now, you know, when I say, you know, I tell people or we go out to eat or something and somebody says, oh, that's got to be really hard, you know, eating gluten free. And it's like, it's the best thing that ever happened to me, really, <laughs> because, I, it, you know, my health by eliminating it, you know, I did a 180 and, and my health journey and, and uh, so, you know, it definitely gives, you know, you something to talk about with people as you know different conversations come up so um but i know that um we we typically like to keep these you know right at around 30 minutes so um you everybody can you know kind of get on with their evening and stuff um does anybody have any other questions or comments or well Obviously, you you all are a part of my family and um, either biologically or friend wise. And so, um, you know that I love Back you home. and and I want to. Hmm? Did you have a We're question? Back on the camera. You want to stick your head in there? And... You guys are there. <laughs> uh, so if you guys want, you know, if there's anything I can do to help you, I already feel like we're already a part of our journey just because you guys have purchased my book and you're reading it. And, um, but I want to be able to, you know, engage with you if there's any other, you know, obviously any other kind of conversations we need to have or walk this journey together. So thanks for taking your time out of your evening to be a part of tonight. I appreciate it a lot. I love you. So thank you for you. Thank you, Maureen.
<laughs> we love you also, and Maureen. Find it on Friday when I see you. <laughs> yes. I look forward to Friday as well. Thanks. We're going we're gonna to have um, a, a birthday celebration next, uh, this coming Friday for me. So, um, Aww. yay. That'll be fun. And then next week we'll be celebrating with mom and dad when we go down for Thanksgiving. So, <laughs> good. Now, who all is in the Phoenix area? Uh, mom and dad are in the Phoenix area. And then okay. Stacy and Denise are here in Prescott with me. And then my sister, as I mentioned, is in Chicago. So Right, right, right. So how far is Prescott from Phoenix? Uh, it's about two hours. Two hours. Okay. Yeah. Because our, yeah, our Juice Plus convention is in Phoenix in April. Mm -hmm. And we always have a free day with, you know, doctors talking and, you know, nutritionists. And it's just a lot of fun. So I just thought maybe y'all could come for the free day. So usually a Saturday. So it's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. Like to meet yeah. everybody. Yeah. Maybe mom and dad could come or definitely, you know, mention to mom and dad that I'd like for them to be able to meet you and meet Dr. Odom when you come out. So we'll have to see about working something in the schedule. That'd be awesome. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, right, thank guys. you again, everyone. I won't, we won't keep you for the rest of your evening, but thank you. And um, appreciate your time. And thank you again for reading. <laughs> thank you. Bye, guys. Thank Bye -bye. you. Love you. Love you, too.